Hi guys, today we will be doing lesson two of the life of Pi. These are the parts of the lesson that we will be looking at today. The major characters, the minor characters, role of the narrator, as well as the setting. Please make sure to like and subscribe down below, as well as to share with any of your friends as well as family members. Characters in a novel are crucial to the development of the conflicts through their actions. Some characters are main characters, for example, Pi and Richard Parker. In Life of Pi, the plot develops around these two characters. Some are minor characters, for example, members of Pi's family, the religious leaders, the animals and the Japanese investigators. Our first major character is Pisin Molitor Patel, also known as Pai. He is the main protagonist and the chief narrator. Pisin comes from the French word for swimming pool. It also means fish-like in English. He is intelligent, full of courtesy, deeply religious and searching for a connection to God or meaning in life by exploring and practicing Christianity, Islam and Hinduism. From childhood, Pai gathers knowledge about the habits and characteristics of animals and people. This turns out to be crucial to his survival. Pai's character develops in the course of the novel, particularly in part two. The next major character is Richard Parker. He is a Royal Bengal tiger weighing 450 pounds or 204 kgs and measuring 2.8 meters long. The tiger's captor, Richard Parker, named him Thirsty, but a shipping clerk reversed their names in error. Pai shares the lifeboat with the tiger for the duration of his ordeal. The tiger kills the hyena on the lifeboat and later the blind cannibal. Pai trains Richard Parker to respect Pai's alpha male dominance thus enabling them to coexist on the lifeboat. Pai describes the tiger's godlike beauty, symmetry and power. For Pai, the tiger is his companion during his ordeal and the reason for staying alive. Here you will see a list of the minor characters which we will go into as well. The first minor character to look at is the author. This is the fictitious narrator of the author's note. He inserts himself into the narrative at several points throughout the novel. He never identifies himself by name, but there are several clues suggesting that he is Jan Mattel himself. The fictitious author provides an additional point of view in the story, gradually revealing the character of Pi through his descriptions of the adult Pi in Canada. The next character is Francis Adirubasami. He is the kind elderly man who tells the author Pai's story during a chance meeting in a Pondicherry coffee shop. He arranges for the author to meet Pai in person to get a first-hand account of Pai's story. He is a friend of the Patel family. He taught Pai to swim as a child and gave him the name Pisin. The next set of minor characters is Pai's family. The first character is Ravi. He is Pai's older brother. He is physically strong, popular, prefers sports, especially cricket, to schoolwork, reading or thinking about religion and God. He teases his younger brother mercilessly over his devotion to three religions. The next character then is Santosh Patel. He is Pai's father and owner of Pondicherry Zoo. He once owned a hotel. He has a natural interest in and skill with animals. He teaches his son to fear wild animals. Though raised a Hindu, he is not religious and is puzzled by Pai's adoption of numerous religions. The political situation in India makes him decide to move his family to Canada. Gita Patel is Pai's loving, sensitive and protective mother. She is a book lover and encourages Pai to read widely. She was raised Hindu with a Baptist education, but she does not subscribe to any religion. Pai inserts her into his second story in place of orange juice. 
Mina Patel is Pai's Indian Canadian wife. His son is Nikhil Patel, also known as Nick, and his daughter is Usha Patel. Satish Kumar Wan is Pai's biology teacher. A polio survivor, he is an odd looking man with a geometric shaped body. An atheist and a communist, he is logical and scientific. He has faith or believes in the views of Mendel, father of genetics, and Darwin, nature selection. Pai is able to accept Mr. Kumar's atheism because, although Kumar does not believe in God, he still believes and takes the leap of faith that reason leads him to. Father Martin is the Catholic priest who introduces Pai to Christianity. He inspires Pai to become a Christian. Satish Kumar too is a baker and a Muslim mystic with the same name as Pai's biology teacher. He is religious in a quiet and humble way. He inspires Pai to become a follower of Islam. The next character is the Hindu Pandit. He is a Hindu priest. He is outraged when Pai, who was raised Hindu, begins practicing other religions. He and the other two religious leaders unwillingly accept Pai's declaration that he just wants to love God. The next set of minor characters are the animals that Pai finds himself with on the boat. The first one is the hyena. It is seen as a very ugly, violent and savage animal that ends up on the lifeboat with Pai. He eats the zebra alive and kills and eats orange juice. He is killed and eaten by Richard Parker. The zebra is a male Grant's zebra. He breaks his leg jumping into the lifeboat. The hyena then torments him and eats him alive. Orange juice is the orangutan that appears on the first day floating on a raft of bananas. Pai sees her as maternal and suffering human-like bouts of loneliness and seasickness. The hyena brutally attacks and kills her. The blind Frenchman is a fellow castaway who is blinded by starvation. Pai comes across him by chance in the middle of the ocean. He tries to kill and cannibalize Pai before Richard Parker kills him. The French cook he is the human counterpart to the hyena in Pai's second story. He is the rude, violent and cannibalistic alpha male. After he kills the sailor and Pai's mother, Pai stabs him and he dies. The Chinese sailor is the human counterpart to the zebra in Pai's second story. Like the zebra, he broke his leg jumping off the ship and it became infected. The cook cuts off the leg and, like the zebra, the sailor dies slowly. Tomohiro Akamoto is an official from the Maritime Department of the Japanese Ministry of Transport who is investigating the sinking of the Japanese Tsimtsang. Together with his assistant, he interviews Pai and is skeptical of Pai's first account of his ordeal. At Suru Chiba, he is Okamoto's assistant. He is the more naive and trusting of the two Japanese officials. Chiba agrees with Pai that the version of his ordeal with the animals is the better story. The role of the narrator or the narrative view is also related to point of view. Most of the novel is narrated by Pai in the first person. As an adult living in Canada, he tells his story to the author. In part one, several characters are interspersed with Pai's story and are narrated by the author in the first person about his visits to Pai in his home in Canada. In part two, Pai narrates the story of his experiences on the lifeboat at the age of 16 from his own point of view. Through this narrative device, we are given glimpses of Pai the man by the author, while the story told by Pai is the story of Pai, the 16-year-old boy, as the adult Pai remembers it. Through the point of view of the author, 
we gather hints of how Pai as an adult has been changed by his experience. Chapter 99 consists entirely of the direct speech of Pai and the Japanese investigators. We are listening to the interview. The various voices allow us to hear Pai in the course of trying to convince the investigators of the truth of his story. By including the thoughts and words of the Japanese investigator, we are given a skeptical point of view, perhaps one that we as readers may have acquired by this stage in the novel. We are given an opportunity to imagine that Pai's story is perhaps not entirely believable. All of these various voices allow us to delve deeper into the stories and into the character of Pai, providing insights into how he survived his ordeal and how it changed him and strengthened his religious faith. While the events of the story take place in several settings, most of the action takes place on a lifeboat adrift in the Pacific Ocean. This is in line with the theme of Life of Pi being Pi's journey, a spiritual and emotional, as well as physical journey, during which he grows and develops into adulthood. There is also a paradox to do with the spaces of the setting, both in physical and emotional terms. While the first part of the novel is set in the freedom and open spaces of the Pondicherry Gardens and Zoo, the settings become increasingly narrow. The worsening political situation in India feels confining to the Patel family who leave. The lifeboat in which Pai finds himself with a man-eating tiger is claustrophobic in the extreme. However, the small lifeboat is adrift on a vast ocean, and the experiences and actions of Pai on that lifeboat, his dedication to keeping Richard Parker alive, his religious rituals, and his observations of nature bring him spiritual insights and experiences of wonder. The relationship with a dangerous animal turns out to be one of true friendship. Thus, ironically, one could see Pai as finding an emotional and spiritual freedom while confined in a lifeboat. Music